sort of uh, go backwards and uh, learn from uh, the electronic orders about underlying uh, uh, electron correlation physics. But for now, uh, the presence of electronic order is part of the phase diagram uh, of these systems. But uh, we also, uh, and, I, and I, as I did uh, last time, uh, we want to uh, stress that uh, these uh, systems are very uh, correlated. Uh, they are, uh, 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 and that has implications for how to think about spin degree freedoms. These are spin degree freedoms, uh, uh, which I advocate to be primarily uh, coming from interaction induced incoherent part of electronic excitations. So uh, the bad metal behavior uh, as uh, uh, defined by room temperature resistivity being large, uh, that was known from the very beginning. I mentioned some of the visualization by, by spectroscopy uh, last time uh, from Jude weight reduction, uh, up as uh, uh, inferred mass enhancement, uh, and th there are various other features. But uh, um, in particular, uh, I think the orbital selective aspects, at least uh, it's a feature uh, that signifies that uh, uh, these systems are uh, very strongly uh, correlated. And so I'm not going to repeat that. Uh, uh, so uh, picking up on that thread, the statement is that the incoherent part of the electron spectral weight is in fact larger than the coherent part of the electron spectral weight. And uh, uh, therefore, uh, to the zeroth order, uh, we want to uh, uh, think about the incoherent uh, contribution, incoherent electron weight contributions to the uh, spin degree freedom and uh, 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 incorporate uh, the coherent weight, uh, effect of the coherent weight. Uh, uh, I have shown you this is aufgeklappt here. Um, so, uh, so this is a, probably the last slide of what I showed last time, uh, uh, which is that uh, uh, based on that statement, we can use the starting from J1, J2 type of uh, uh, underlying uh, interactions of the, uh, of the IO uh, quasi-local moments uh, living on the square lattice. And uh, so we divide that into A and B sub lattices and uh, write down effective theory based on the staggered component of each sub lattices and the building the uh, effect of the coherent uh, electron weights. And that led to uh, the uh, consideration of anti pi zero anti fellow magnet order. The uh, dashed line here is the onset of the pneumatic order. And uh, the zero temperature transition for two dimensions is weakly first order because this is marginally relevant. In three dimensions, uh, it would be continuous. That follows from just the uh, uh, counting of the scaling dimension of this uh, uh, coupling. And, uh, but in both cases, they will be uh, concurrent. And we verify that statement later on uh, from some large end calculations of this uh, effective field theory. Now, uh, uh, that uh, uh, cannot be the end of the story because we want to couple these uh, collective effects with the electron physics. Uh, but there's also uh, a question uh, which I alluded to last time. If you look at the nictites, uh, if you look at uh, the calcogenites and the weight of FETE, for instance, the ordered component is already signifying that uh, it's larger than uh, spin one uh, object. Uh, but here, the total spectral weight is uh, uh, three Bohr magnetar square per ion, which is very large. It corresponds to a whole size of uh, spin one half living at uh, every site, if you just count uh, the, the weight. And uh, uh, that's what the neutron tells us, neutron scattering experiments. And uh, uh, so presumably that's a lower bound of the spectral weight. But it also says that there's a, uh, if I want to start from spin one, uh, there's a lot of uh, spectral weight that is being shaken into some uh, background. Uh, so we would like to look at this problem from electronic models. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, among the various reasons uh, for uh, doing so. And so we've uh, uh, recently, and this is the uh, work primarily of uh, Wen Jun uh, Hu and uh, uh, Lei Chen in collaboration with uh, uh, Federica Becker, uh, we've uh, considered the multi-orbital Hubble model uh, with 
uh, Hong's interactions, and it's been recognized, uh, everybody agrees that Hong's interaction uh, is an important part of the correlation physics. And so we would like to study uh, the uh, ground state uh, using variational Monte Carlo. Uh, and the reason is that in the intermediate correlation regime where the system is on the verge of uh, electro localization or delocalization, uh, it's a challenge uh, for uh, uh, to, to theoretically access that regime. And the variation Monte Carlo is one of uh, uh, the ways uh, to do so. Uh, and which is based on some trial wave function uh, that uh, 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 is uh, uh, attached with uh, gestural factors. And uh, one of the things we did that uh, uh, to our knowledge has not been done in the past uh, was to recognize that the Hong's uh, coupling uh, is uh, important for the correlation physics. Uh, so we would like not only uh, use the usual density uh, gestural factor, but also the spin uh, gestural factor that can treat uh, the Holmes coupling. And so we've uh, uh, used this uh, uh, method uh, for uh, some two orbital version uh, of the models for of the multi orbital Hubble models by for the ion nictites uh, introduced by Sri Raghu and the collaborators from very early on, as well as some three orbital. Uh, version of the model introduced by uh, uh, Adriana uh, Morillo and uh, collaborators. And uh, in both cases, uh, we were able to study, ask the following question, uh, two questions. First, uh, what kind of order uh, is stabilized? And uh, what I'm showing here is that uh, the final statement that there's a, a pi zero anti fellow magnetic order uh, evolving as a function of u. This is a, a two orbital model and the bandwidth is somewhere uh, around, around here. And, uh, uh, and this is a pneumatic order, uh, the order parameter, which I already defined last time, uh, the product of spins along the x direction uh, minus uh, the product along the y direction. And uh, we can show uh, by doing calculations of different sizes, L by L uh, clusters in, using this uh, relational Monte Carlo method to show that indeed uh, both orders uh, uh, within numerical uncertainty uh, go, uh, go, uh, are suppressed uh, concurrently. And so this is the uh, result uh, based on finite size scaling to the thermodynamic limit. And uh, these uh, uh, represent the critical values uh, of, uh, for the transition and within the numerical uh, uncertainty, they are the same. And within the numerical uncertainty, this is compatible with uh, second order phase transition, although we cannot exclude the tiny uh, jump of the order parameter uh, between the two points uh, here. So, so all these uh, are consistent uh, with uh, the conclusions from the effective field theory, but uh, obviously this uh, uh, is done on uh, the electronic model. And uh, uh, we can see the effect of Hohn's uh, uh, coupling, uh, and uh, uh, we can also connect it uh, to uh, the uh, localization, delocalization transition, which uh, one can, in this procedure, can infer by two things. One is to calculate the density uh, structure factor, N of Q, and ask uh, what's the behavior of, uh, of N of Q in the small Q uh, limit, and uh, the other is uh, analyze the double on density versus uh, the interaction. And uh, uh, the combination of these two uh, lead us to conclude that the uh, localization, delocalization transition is somewhere around here uh, above uh, at a value of U that's larger than uh, both the anti fellow magnetic uh, quantum critical point and a pneumatic uh, quantum critical point, but not that far away. So, so therefore, the uh, the quantum critical point uh, or points uh, that are concurrent uh, happen uh, in the bad metal uh, regime. We haven't uh, been able to calculate the quasi-particle weight uh, Z versus U in this approach. It can be done. It takes uh, uh, more work to do that. So the expectation based on the statement uh, of, uh, that follows from analyzing the density structure factor 
and double on density evolution is that the z uh, is still small uh, at the point where the transition uh, takes place. So, uh, so, uh, so this uh, provides an electronic way of first of all seeing uh, the pneumatic order uh, that uh, accompanies the uh, magnetic order uh, and uh, uh, that agrees with the uh, the conclusion of analyzing effective field theory from scaling analysis from large M uh, calculations. Uh, uh, but it also sets a stage of uh, analyzing the couplings of electrons to this uh, collective uh, objects. Uh, and so uh, at least I'm quite excited that this direction uh, should allow uh, further studies uh, uh, that uh, 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 regarding the coupling of the uh, uh, collective, uh, uh, the orders uh, uh, with uh, the uh, underlying electronic uh, excitations. So this is about uh, nictites. The nictites is uh, uh, the osmites, uh, the canonical case of pi zero uh, collinear anti magnetic order and uh, this pneumatic order that accompanies it. One of the, uh, the uh, surprising and also rich uh, uh, behavior that the overall family of the ion-based uh, uh, superconductors uh, has uh, uh, is that uh, this uh, uh, very large uh, there's a diversity of electronic orders and uh, uh, and uh, presumably that even though pneumaticity almost always accompanies uh, such electronic orders the diversity of electronic orders would suggest that microscopically there's some uh, diversity with the pneumatic order uh, the underlying degree freedom that uh, uh, comes in forming uh, a pneumatic uh, correlation is a pneumatic order, even though our symmetry grounds, uh, most of them uh, look the same. And uh, so given this diversity of electronic orders, uh, again, one could, uh, uh, just like uh, the large material materials parameter space of these systems, one could uh, consider these as complications, but one could also consider these as uh, an opportunity and ask the, the question whether there's uh, a, a unified way uh, to understand uh, these different types of uh, electronic orders. And that's the effort uh, that I want to uh, describe, uh, which is uh, uh, going towards unification. So perhaps the most famous uh, story in this variety of electronic orders is uh, FESE. This uh, is a material that was uh, already looked at uh, uh, couple of years after the initial discovery of the ion-based superconductors, but uh, the attention to it was really uh, revised, uh, revived uh, by the Oxford group, uh, the, uh, 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 the council group, and the Dresden group, uh, among uh, others. And uh, the, uh, what was emphasized was that if you look at the ambient pressure uh, phase transition, uh, there is tetragonal to orthorhombic phase transition around 90 Kelvin, just like there was uh, in the uh, one to two arsenides here, it's somewhere around 140 or so Kelvin. So the temperature scales is similar, uh, but there's no static anti magnetic order. If you do uh, elastic neutron scattering, uh, one doesn't see anything. And so uh, what, what does that mean? And then there's a rich phase diagram here, which I'm going to come back to. And so what, uh, uh, in the effort uh, to uh, gain a unified understanding, uh, we started, uh, this was a work primarily done with Wang Yu initially, uh, but has continued on, uh, as I will describe, uh, which was that uh, for the uh, ion uh, arsenides already, uh, I described uh, if one uh, chooses uh, to start from this quasi-localized moment at zero sort of physics with J1, J2, that's not adequate. Uh, one uh, would need to include the bi-quadratic couplings to understand uh, the dynamics. And uh, uh, these are multi-orbital systems, so there's a good reason that uh, they should be uh, present, although uh, why and, uh, and how big that is, I probably we don't know. Uh, there's a large effort of using ab initio methods 
to calculate the uh, uh, J uh, in these systems. But the evidential method is very hard to be applied uh, to extract the bi-quadratic decoupling because evidential methods uses the single particle uh, properties and uh, uh, the dipolar sector couples to single particle uh, degrees of freedom very well. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, quadrupolar uh, sector uh, does not couple to the uh, electronic uh, uh, single particle degree freedom very well. And uh, so that uh, makes it uh, uh, hard to really know uh, the uh, ab initial values of K. So I'm going to ask the following question. Let's assume that there is a, a frustrating uh, 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 bilinear exchange interactions, but also uh, the presence of these uh, biquadratic interactions and, and ask, uh, is there some a reasonable robust uh, understanding of the phase diagram that can give rise to a variety of phases? Uh, we uh, already described the phases that describe the, uh, that they are uh, consistent with the properties of iron arsenides. Is there a phase in the phase diagram that can be consistent with the property of the FESE? Uh, uh, and, and others, and I'll come back to the others. So the uh, proposal was uh, that uh, uh, if uh, there's a spin quadrupolar uh, order, uh, quadrupoles being the product uh, of the spins, uh, you can think of it as a disk uh, in the spin space, and, uh, uh, and if uh, these objects form a pi zero uh, uh, order, uh, uh, and develop quadrupolar order, and I'll pick one to do the analysis, uh, that uh, uh, should uh, satisfy uh, the phenomenological constraint that there's no uh, magnetic sig if, uh, signal that can be seen, uh, but there's a nematicity. And uh, uh, we can uh, go through order from uh, disorder analysis in, in semi-classical analysis or uh, uh, or you know, in, in the, for, for the spin one system, uh, initially for the classical spin limit as well, and uh, I'll describe some efforts of using DMRG to show that such a phase does exist and is stable. Uh, and uh, uh, we uh, uh, calculate, uh, this was actually done before the experiment, uh, calculated the spin spectral weight uh, distribution as a function of Q and omega. Uh, so at the low frequency limit, one can see uh, that the matrix element, uh, zero frequency, there's no coupling uh, to the spin structure factor. Uh, spin structure factor will not pick it up. Uh, finite frequency, uh, there is a, a, a matrix element, uh, which is linearly proportional to E, and so uh, E square, uh, and then in the ghost mode, which is the, in the quadrupolar sector, uh, has a spectral weight of one over E. So we expect the linear in E uh, spectral weight at low energies. And, but importantly, there's the both uh, spectral weight near pi zero. Uh, and that's the proposed wave vector uh, for the quadrupolar order. And uh, 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 th there's also spectral wave uh, pi pi. So this uh, uh, was uh, subsequently uh, seen uh, in the inelastic neutral scattering experiment. There is this sizable spectral weight uh, near pi zero, uh, but there's a, uh, if one uh, look at in detail, in system linear in E dependence, that's compatible with the, the data, but uh, uh, one probably, uh, this is not the best linear E dependence, uh, and, uh, but it's, it's at least compatible. And there's a both that and, uh, uh, and the pi pi spectral weight, and the two, have uh, uh, its own temperature dependence. If you look at the temperature dependence near pi zero, uh, it looks like all set up in an order parameter like way as temperatures uh, uh, is known through uh, the 90 Kelvin, the structural uh, phase transition. So, uh, so these, uh, at least the uh, inelastic neutral scattering measurement is uh, compatible with the pi zero and the uh, quadrupolar order. Ultimately, it's a hidden order. It's really very hard to directly uh, probe it. Uh, and uh, 
so the, right now the dynamical measurement is the uh, and also the temperature dependence of the finite frequency uh, spectral weight uh, is the uh, most direct uh, the consistency check. Uh, there's also uh, uh, something that's worth emphasizing. I mentioned that IO uh, nictides, uh, where antiferromagnetic order is seen, the total spectral weight is about three Bohr magnetol square per IO. And this is a huge amount of spectral weight. Uh, it's even larger than the IO arsenides case, uh, even though uh, there's no uh, static uh, magnetic order. Um, I already mentioned that uh, there's a very interesting phase diagram uh, as a function uh, or alluded to as a function of pressure. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, we've uh, carried out uh, a, a DMRG study uh, of uh, uh, this model, this uh, uh, J and K uh, model uh, that uh, uh, goes along uh, with some uh, 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 semi-classical analysis based on uh, site factorized the wave functions uh, for uh, based on the SU3 representation. Uh, and the, uh, the semi classical calculation uh, led to, for, for these various choices of parameters, uh, led to a, the statement that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the pi zero antiferro cordial pro order sits in the phase diagram in a robust way adjacent to the pi zero collinear antiferromagnetic magnetic order, either directly uh, adjacent to each other or separated by a phase that has a wave vector of uh, uh, pi half pi, and uh, there's, uh, uh, and that's antiferromagnetic. magnetic. And so uh, based on the uh, patterns of order, one would conclude that all these three phases are pneumatic, and we can calculate the pneumatic order parameters uh, combination of sigma one, which is the usual pneumatic order based on the product of spins, and uh, uh, the sigma q, uh, which is based on the product of the quadrupolar moment. Uh, again, product uh, along x bound minus its counterpart along y bound. And uh, so, so the two components evolved, so j1, J2 over J1, 1.5 is a taken cut like this, and J2 over J1 equals 0 0.8 uh, is taking a cut through this. And uh, so the important point is that all these phases are pneumatic, uh, which we can see from the DMRG calculation. And also DMRG, uh, we've done some representative data points uh, in the described uh, space to, to verify uh, such uh, uh, order. Uh, and uh, so, so this is the effort, this uh, uh, DMRG is an extensive calculation of them on L times 2L uh, uh, strip and uh, uh, analyzing these uh, uh, correlators uh, on uh, interior L by L uh, portion of that strip. And, uh, uh, but the, the, the upshot of this is that with that understanding of the phase diagram and the fact that they are all pneumatic, we can make uh, the proposal that uh, uh, applying pressure is, uh, and there are, there are several reasons that uh, we can think of applying pressure as, uh, 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 as uh, 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 causing a decrease in the ratio of the uh, biquadratic coupling to the bilinear J coupling. Uh, so this would be going to the left and that uh, would, uh, that led us to propose that under pressure in FESE, uh, one is going from uh, this uh, uh, antiferro quadrupolar order phase to the pi zero antiferro magnet order. And maybe there's a region in between. And there's uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, studies of the phase diagram and electronic orders under pressure uh, by the uh, AIMS group, uh, by the Beijing group and by others. Uh, there's also quite a bit of uh, uh, thermosurface measurements uh, uh, as a function of pressure. And uh, uh, I don't think everybody agrees on the phase diagram, all the details, but the uh, overall feature uh, is that uh, there's uh, a uh, pneumatic order at ambient pressure without dipolar magnetic order, but eventually the dipolar magnetic order develops 
and appears to be pneumatic, and uh, eventually 38 Kelvin superconductivity uh, appears at the high uh, power, uh, at high pressures. And perhaps there's an intermediate independent phase, perhaps not. This is still to be sorted out. So at least uh, this uh, uh, allows us, this J and K type model allows us to provide an understanding of such uh, uh, types of phases and phase transitions. Uh, I also want to, I don't have the time to go through all of these, but uh, this uh, FETE has its own type of anti fellow magnet order, and it's also pneumatic. Uh, there are certain IO arsenides which show double Q C4 symmetric uh, anti fellow magnet order. And uh, recently, there's a uh, uh, development of this uh, N equals 5.5, this potassium, cesium, rubidium, IO2, arsenic 2, uh, which is heavily hold up side of the uh, arsenide phase diagram, which showed a B2G pneumatic order, which I want to uh, briefly go through. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, the initial uh, uh, experiment actually came from, uh, which I'm, I, I, I'm not uh, referring to that here, there was an initial NMR measurement by the USTC group, uh, which suggested that in these systems, uh, the, uh, there's a, an isotropy uh, that's uh, 45 degrees away from the usual anisotropy uh, that is seen in the uh, barrier ion to arsenic two. Uh, the Fodan group uh, did the STM measurement and provide added evidence for the rotated form of pneumaticity. And then uh, the uh, uh, Tokyo uh, cultural collaboration uh, showed that elasto pneumaticity uh, of uh, cesium ion to arsenic 2, uh, as, as well as rubidium ion to arsenic 2, has the largest uh, uh, susceptibility along the direction which is 45 degree rotated, and that's compatible with uh, the STM conclusion uh, and the NMR conclusion. Uh, I should uh, caution that very recently, Anna Bomer, so I guess a, a second uh, a council group uh, has uh, uh, raised objections to, uh, to this. Uh, so I think experimentally, it still needs to uh, be sorted out. But nonetheless, it uh, at least motivated us to think about uh, these different forms of uh, pneumatic orders. And so usually when think about C4 symmetry breaking as characterizing the pneumatic order, we claim that in fact, the more general form is uh, to, to have a, a discrete symmetry breaking that in fact is more convenient to, uh, to be organized in terms of broken uh, mirror symmetry. And so B1G is the usual case where X and Y uh, represents the two principal uh, directions. Uh, there's a B2G, uh, which is a 45 degree rotated. And then there's also uh, A2G. Uh, all these are one dimensional representations of D4H point group. And in fact, last time there was a question, uh, a week ago in my talk, there was a question about whether there could be a uh, pneumatic order uh, in, uh, in uh, the case when it's tetragonal. So, uh, so I, I, I answer that there's a lot of uh, uh, fluctuations that certainly is seen in the tetragonal part of phase diagram. But in, in fact, an A2G pneumatic order would be in that category. It respects the C4 symmetry, but it breaks uh, two uh, mirror symmetries. So it's still uh, a pneumatic order. And to my knowledge, there has been no observation indication of A2G order, uh, pneumatic order. But B2G is in principle. Uh, uh, allowed, and one can connect that to the type of, if it's a spin-driven pneumatic uh, order, one could tie it up with the, the type of uh, uh, magnetic fluctuations, uh, which I did not get into. But let me just uh, mention that there's also a reasonably sound uh, empirical basis to think about B2G pneumatic order in the uh, uh, heavily hold of uh, IO arsenides. This is a neutral scattering measurement uh, in potassium ion to uh, arsenic two, which show that there's a very large spectral weight at two pi over three, uh, two pi over three uh, wave vector. Uh, so two pi over three, two pi over three wave vector, 
would correspond a pattern like this. And uh, according to our classification, it would be of the B2G uh, pneumatic order that, that can be promoted by it. We give some microscopics to verify that statement. One is uh, at the classical uh, JK spin model level, uh, uh, where we can use the combinations of J's and K's to identify this QQ and in particular 2 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3 type of magnet order. And if we look at that, we did indeed find the B2G pneumatic order to be developing uh, that's associated with uh, this kind of uh, MP. Here it's a static order uh, in the uh, uh, in reality for uh, for potassium iron to arsenic uh, two. That's more fluctuation is producing this. Uh, we did a DMRG study uh, for the J and the K combinations that led to this two pi over three two pi over three uh, order and show that indeed the B2G pneumatic order develops while the B1G is uh, order is uh, negligible and plus the zero in thermodynamic limit. And uh, also one could do some lambda analysis to show that if it's really um, a generic incommensurate uh, magnetic fluctuations, it will lead to uh, the three channels of uh, pneumatic correlation B1G, B2G, A2G uh, that the uh, space group symmetry uh, that, uh, would dictate that has to be uh, degenerate. Uh, and uh, uh, in fact, uh, there's some experimental indication that uh, there's at least a quasi-degeneracy between the B1G and the B2G channel. So that, that's certainly an added wrinkle that's also, uh, uh, at least uh, it's interesting and uh, potentially is uh, a useful property uh, for the understanding of the underlying microscopic physics, if not for anything else. And I just want to make uh, uh, the point that I think uh, 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 theoretical and experimental efforts like this is quite important. Uh, and certainly I'd like to see the uh, experimental results to be consistent from different groups. Uh, uh, in that, uh, uh, a few years ago, uh, we looked at uh, this system uh, in collaboration with Hilbert of Oronizable and uh, Kai Gruber, and uh, uh, to suggest that uh, indeed uh, the, uh, the electronic orders at in the vicinity of n equals 5.5, and there's in fact uh, quantum critic indication for quantum criticality, that order is different from the pi zero and the fellow magnetic order that is typically uh, seen. And so efforts like this, uh, pneumatic order among other things, uh, 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 spin spectrum and other uh, uh, probes uh, should help eventually to clarify uh, the overall phase diagram and maybe even marching towards uh, the uh, n equals to five case. And so just to, uh, to uh, summarize this uh, part, uh, one, uh, perhaps uh, this variety uh, gives the impression that it's very complicated but I want to make the claim that all these different kind of electronic orders seen in different members of ion-based uh, uh, superconductor family and their associated pneumatic orders uh, at least can be, uh, they, they can all appear uh, in the overall phase diagrams of these frustrating J and K type uh, models. And uh, uh, I think uh, this, is so far the, uh, has gone the longest in terms of uh, providing a unified underlying uh, microscopic uh, description. Our tentative conclusion is that uh, uh, these uh, variety of electronic orders and uh, pneumaticity uh, point to the importance of the magnetic interactions and the more generally the key role of the spin channel. That it's not to say that uh, orbitals and other degree freedoms may not be playing a role in uh, the pneumaticity, they must on symmetry grounds. Uh, the question of whether they can be the primary driving force and still understand all this richer variety of electronic orders, that uh, to my knowledge has not been looked at. So, so I, 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 I uh, consider uh, this uh, varieties of electronic and, and the pneumatic orders in ion-based uh, 
materials uh, as uh, an opportunity uh, to uh, 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 in providing clues uh, to the underlying uh, correlation physics. And uh, naturally, if a magnet channel is important uh, and spin uh, degree freedom is important for the electronic orders, uh, they should be thought of as important in driving uh, specific connectivity. So I, I will, uh, 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 Piers, presumably it's more natural if I continue on with the presentation and coming back with the discussion. Uh, You are muted, Piers, but I take that as a yes. Uh, I said, if there are any questions, please raise your hand at this point. It looks like the audience is quiet, so uh, carry on. Okay, good. Right, so now I'm going to switch gears uh, to uh, the uh, graphing Mori uh, systems, in particular the pneumaticity. We've uh, heard uh, uh, extensive discussions uh, uh, on these uh, uh, systems, they are very rich. Uh, there's uh, uh, from the very beginning, uh, it was recognized that there's a correlated insulator uh, uh, as part of the phase diagram, and there's a city connectivity. And, uh, uh, and so, this uh, uh, the, the twisted bilayer graphing, it was already illustrated that twisting creates uh, this kind of Mori pattern. And uh, uh, I'm being blocked by the image, so I need. Okay, good. And uh, uh, the uh, formation of these uh, Mori uh, patterns uh, in uh, uh, for uh, the vicinity of the magic angle gives narrow bands, and uh, these narrow bands uh, can be uh, uh, considered. Uh, to be in terms of uh, uh, a very large uh, unit cell in a real space and a small uh, Brian zone and uh, uh, one associated with uh, one valley and it's uh, a counterpart from the other layer and uh, uh, the other associated with uh, the other valley and its counterpart from the other uh, layer. And so, um, so the question is, uh, let's see. good. Um, uh, so we want to uh, understand uh, the uh, electron correlations and that's uh, one of the uh, central questions uh, uh, in the field. Uh, what's, uh, uh, how do we think about electron correlations in these narrow memory bands? Now, uh, taking some clue uh, from uh, the phenomenology, uh, I want to make two points. First uh, is that, uh, uh, I think I can get back to the laser point. Uh, um, okay. um, that um, um, the correlated insulator, uh, from the very beginning, uh, it was known that it's quite fragile. So, so this is the very initial set of resistivity versus temperature plot. And you can see that the upturn portion is happening at temperatures below a few Kelvin, in this case, four Kelvin and different samples to you uh, different uh, uh, precise values, but uh, several Kelvin, maybe up to 10 Kelvin, but that's a scale. And this is also shown here as a conductance versus one over T that in this initial set of samples, insulating behavior happens below four Kelvin uh, and only below uh, in this temperature range. Right. And so what's the scale? In the nictides, uh, ion based superconductors, I uh, emphasized last time that we have a hierarchy of scales. We have electron volts for electron correlation scale, we have 100 milli electron volts for electronic order and the fluctuation scale, and we have 10 MeV for uh, the CPU connectivity graph, et cetera, scale. Here, uh, the scale is much reduced. It's more like a heavy fermion scale. Uh, the bandwidth uh, in practice is on the order of 10 uh, to 20 MeV. Uh, and uh, 
Uh, but even compared to that small energy scale, uh, the regime that the CPU insulating behavior happens, uh, it's uh, at least uh, one decade of uh, scale uh, below. Uh, so, uh, so that uh, suggests that the core the insulator, uh, it's an insulator, but it's a very fragile uh, insulator. Good, that's point number one. Uh, point number two, and that's very recent, uh, uh, namely, there's a, a, a number of STM groups which have uh, probed uh, the electronic states in the bilayer, uh, twisted bilayer graph thing. And uh, I uh, am showing you uh, the result of uh, Abe uh, uh, Paspati's group from Colombia, uh, which I thought was uh, at least especially informative to me, uh, in which they. <clears throat> They just uh, traced the uh, local denser states in real space. They just rotate 120 degrees and rotate another 120 degrees and uh, 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 construct the difference in the local density states of uh, uh, these uh, different directions and form the absolute value uh, to show that uh, there's this uh, anisotropy. And uh, this anisotropy, uh, was found to be energy dependent and uh, uh, is uh, strongest near the Fermi energy. So I, I think that's a, a very appealing feature suggesting that uh, it's an intrinsic property. And also there's some systematics as a function of uh, uh, filling uh, with the anisotropy being the strongest uh, near uh, half filling. So uh, I, I don't think the uh, STM experiment can tell us uh, with the presence of local strain, et cetera, uh, that there is actual static order or it's a, uh, just a correlation, but even pneumatic correlation is very interesting. Uh, in the mid tides, uh, the bulk materials has taught us a lot about microscopic correlation physics. Uh, and perhaps here we could uh, serve the same purpose. I should mention that transport measurements uh, have also uh, point to to the presence of uh, anisotropy, uh, both in the superconducting and the normal state, uh, but I, I'm going to focus exclusively on the normal state in uh, this work. So uh, now uh, the twisted bilayer graphene, uh, we've heard extensive discussions about uh, whether there are a small set of Wannian states uh, that can be used uh, to uh, represent uh, the, the Moray bands uh, or not. Uh, and so, uh, so I want to address uh, these two issues uh, uh, by bypassing that, uh, uh, that issue, that theoretical issue. And uh, uh, the way I bypass that is to look at the uh, trilayer graphing uh, of the uh, hexagonal uh, boron nitrides. Uh, this, uh, uh, is uh, an experiment that's been championed by the Berkeley group uh, in collaboration with the Stanford group. And uh, so the trilayer graphene has been studied since some time ago. This is a side view uh, uh, and it's an ABC stacking. This is a top view uh, of the ABC stacking and this is a, a view of uh, uh, the couplings. Uh, and uh, uh, now, so that's trilayer graphene per se. And if you put on top of the uh, HBN, the lattice mismatch of about uh, 2% or so uh, implies that there will be a more pattern that will be created. So this is a, just an illustration uh, of, of that. And one can apply a uh, electric field vertically uh, that uh, creates a pot potential bias delta uh, to uh, tune. Uh, the electronic states of the uh, system. And uh, um, the, uh, uh, it was emphasized that uh, for a particular sign of uh, the electric uh, field uh, that uh, one creates uh, uh, the, uh, the situation in which the Mori band that's sitting near the Fermi energy uh, is uh, in fact uh, uh, has a uh, turn number to be zero, and uh, 
uh, uh, you could reverse the sign of the potential and then uh, that's no longer the case. Uh, so I learned that uh, band uh, structure and uh, the underlying microscopy model from uh, Sento, uh, who said <clears throat> that, hey, this is the case where uh, there are, uh, there's a two orbital uh, Hubbard model. Uh, and uh, so the, with the uh, potential that I've chosen here, uh, this is the uh, bands, uh, the red and the uh, uh, blue uh, me, uh, represent the two, uh, two valleys, uh, which uh, uh, is the orbital degree freedom. So that's the two orbital. Uh, and it is the uh, Hubbard model part. Uh, I have the dispersion uh, that uh, with finite number of pi binding parameters, uh, one can capture that, both the bands and the Fermi surface. And uh, as the usual, uh, Hubbard and Holmes coupling on site, but obviously because the, uh, I don't know, obviously, but uh, the, the, uh, the unit cell being so large, uh, one should also consider uh, inter-site interactions. And uh, so V is the uh, nearest neighbor density density interaction. VH is the, and yes, neighbor, uh, it's changing to action. And uh, uh, the, the work of uh, uh, Zhang and Santo, in fact, provides some uh, estimate of uh, what the, uh, these uh, uh, parameters could be. Question to you, so, Yes, please. A few questions. Um, uh, can you tell, what can you tell us about your band structure that you used here? Um, are these... Uh, Orbitals, Vania states uh, locate localized on the honeycomb lattice, uh, or on the triangular lattice. On the triangular lattice. Yeah. So this is the pattern which I'm showing you, yes. and I can define nearest neighbor hopping, uh, next nearest neighbor hopping, etc. Uh, it's not. It's only a very limited number of the hopping parameters. I see. So because some of the approaches take Vania states that are on the that are localized on the uh, honeycomb. Sites. So no. here is a triangle. Okay. Does that make a difference in the results one gets? It it uh, it, it could uh, certainly for the electronic orders. We've uh, basically focused our analysis. This is a very first piece of work on the Mori systems uh, on this uh, 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 on this model, which uh, is well defined on the triangular lattice. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. Could I maybe add one thing? Yeah, Sento, please. Yeah, so yes, uh, you may be recalling the story of twisted bilayer graphene, which has an extra C2 symmetry, which is absent in this system. Mm -hmm. So I given that that symmetry is broken, you know, the honeycomb description is no advantage to that. Okay. Okay, that's all. Piers, are you happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so, uh, so we've uh, uh, started with this model and uh, we've done two things. Uh, as I said, the fragility of uh, the core inserting phase uh, was uh, something that uh, uh, was in my mind when I first saw uh, these uh, uh, data from the very beginning. I didn't do anything with it. Uh, 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 but with this model, uh, we decided to look at that. So we've uh, applied this uh, U1 auxiliary spin method, which I described last time. If there's a question, I'll be very happy to show uh, the representation again, but uh, it was presented uh, a week ago in my talk. And it's the same method. And so we've uh, looked at this model, two orbital Hubble model. Um, first at half filling, so the blue line uh, shows uh, Z, the quasi-particle weight, uh, as a function of U over W. And you can see that there's a, a metal to insulator transition. Uh, if we introduce uh, the, so this so far, first look at the outside interactions, the Holmes coupling, uh, uh, the Holmes coupling reduces the threshold of value for the, uh, uh, metal to insert the transition. And in fact, with reasonable values on its coupling, you can see that the effect is quite pronounced. And with reasonable value of the Holmes coupling, uh, one uh, 
the parameters which were estimated uh, for this uh, 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 for this system would be sitting sort of uh, either on the bare metal side or on the fragile insulator side. So by fragile insulator, I mean uh, just like bare metal, I mean the metallic ground state, but the quasi particle weight has been substantially reduced from the non interacting value. Fragile insulator is defined as being on the localized side, but uh, it's still not too far away uh, from the localization, uh, delocalization transition. Uh, we've uh, done very limited amount of work for the quarter filling case uh, for both zero and uh, non zero Holmes coupling. And the systematics are compatible with everything we know about for the orbital Hubbard models. Uh, but I'm going to focus on the uh, half filling case. And with this as a guidance, I'm going to now look at uh, the electronic order. And uh, uh, so we've uh, done so using the variation of Monte Carlo uh, method that I described earlier, that also used the spin gestural factor, giving that, recognizing that Holmes coupling uh, plays a very important role. And so, uh, so first, just outside interactions, uh, what we found that uh, that uh, is that uh, there could be, for instance, the candidate orders would be the collinear anti fellow magnetic order uh, that with a pattern shown here. It could be uniaxial anti fellow uh, valley order uh, with a pattern uh, valley pattern shown uh, here. We found that uh, uh, among the various states we have considered, this collinear anti fellow magnetic order has the uh, lowest energy for this uh, particular choice of uh, U over W, which is sitting uh, somewhere around here in within this sort of cluster region uh, as a function of the uh, Holmes coupling. And uh, so the important point to make here is that as I go through the metal to insulator transition boundary, regardless whether I'm on the bad metal side or whether I'm on the fragile insulator side, uh, the uh, effect on the uh, uh, magnetic order, electronic order is uh, very minimal. The, basically, it's the same uh, collinear anti fellow magnetic order uh, that's stabilized. And we can do the same thing by fixing the Holmes coupling to a particular value and uh, tune you uh, to the metal to insert a transition. Once again, whether I'm on the bad metal side or fragile insert side, the magnetic order is uh, uh, doesn't really notice that. With that, we can calculate the pneumatic order. This uh, the model actually has a, a C6 uh, a symmetry uh, because the uh, the uh, interactions uh, uh, that broke the C6 symmetry is considered to be uh, small. But uh, in in uh, if you uh, uh, the actual symmetry is C3, but that doesn't matter. Uh, in either of the two cases, we would be led uh, to consider uh, this pneumatic order parameter, which uh, is defined by the products of the E1, E2, E3 directions and forming this uh, combination. So uh, in, according to uh, D6, this would be uh, one of the uh, two dimensional representations. According to uh, D3, it would be uh, just a one dimensional representation. And uh, so we can uh, calculate the pneumatic order parameter using the variation of Monte Carlo. And we found that uh, uh, the, there is a, a pneumatic order uh, which is present both on the fragile insulator side of the uh, localization, delocalization transition, uh, as well as on the uh, bad metal side of the localization, delocalization transition. And we, we reach the same conclusion regardless of whether we fix the U to Holmes coupling or fix the Holmes coupling uh, tuning uh, U. So uh, this uh, 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 one more thing I should present, uh, as, as I emphasized that the, uh, the nearest neighbor interactions uh, can play an important role. And we want to ask whether uh, these uh, orders are stable against uh, such interactions. So uh, VH is the exchange interaction uh, nearest neighbor. And we found that there's a finite range uh, of stability uh, before the ferromagnet 
with green is the ferromagnetic order and eventually uh, becomes the, the ground state. And the, again, the estimated using the uh, cooling in, interaction form and project to these uh, states, as the value is somewhere around here. Uh, so, so at least uh, it could still be uh, uh, falling in the regime uh, that uh, uh, the, the, this, the collinear and development in order is stable and there's a pneumatic order. And in any case, the main conclusion to us is that there's a reasonably uh, finite range of stability of such a state, but there are also competing states floating around. And we also look at the stability against the, uh, the nearest neighbor uh, repulsive uh, interaction, the, the V term, and uh, there's a sizable range of stability. The estimated value of V is somewhere uh, around uh, here, and it's still in the region where uh, it's at least uh, uh, lower in energy than the uh, non order state. Uh, that E0 is a non ordered, uh, the energy, ground state energy of non order state, and CAFM is the collinear anti ferromagnet order that I presented. So, so this leads me to the end of this part. Uh, by looking at how pneumatic order could arise in uh, this system, uh, we reach uh, the conclusion that uh, regardless of whether the parent system is a fragile insulator or a bad metal, it doesn't really matter much uh, to the uh, resulting electronic orders and the resulting pneumaticity. And I want to use that as a clue to suggest that the other uh, part of the correlation physics uh, that's anchored by uh, the, uh, the, the parent system, uh, it really doesn't care that much whether the system uh, in the uh, integer filling, nearby integer filling is on the fragile insulator side um, or the bad metal side. Uh, they, uh, all of these have a range uh, uh, that anchors uh, a domain of attraction uh, in which uh, uh, the correlation that the one sees uh, that uh, in the parent system can still influence even in the, in the uh, uh, away from the integer filling. So, uh, so I want to make that uh, as the uh, proposition that uh, the the kind of things that were discussed earlier in the week that uh, the superconductivity, regardless of the fate uh, of the uh, core insulator, looking at this perspective, uh, is uh, would be natural because whether the integer filling is sitting here, or you tune the strands of interactions and turn the integer filling a state to the bad metal side, the physics uh, away from integer filling uh, uh, largely uh, wouldn't care too much. So just like in a nictite, the parent system is bad metal, can still control the correlation physics. Uh, here, uh, it's exciting that the fragile insider is seen. And it's exciting that the integer filling can be tuned across it. And one could ask the question whether the overall correlation physics, including superconductivity, uh, is much modified or not. And so far, evidence suggests uh, that uh, uh, they are not. And in fact, to me, that's not a contradiction for the, uh, the correlation driven, uh, electron, electron interaction driven superconductivity. In fact, I would say that actually. Uh, elevates uh, the uh, contention that the superconductivity is driven by primary driven by electron electron correlation as opposed to electron formats driven. So with that, uh, let me summarize. For the ion nictites and the calcogenites, I emphasize on diverse electronic orders and diverse uh, uh, and associated nematicity post a, 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 a went through the effort in which we advanced a unified understanding based on frustration. And the overall conclusion uh, from this looking at the electronic orders is that a bad metallicity uh, yields uh, short range spin couplings. And that coupled with uh, the things that I went through last time is that, that it's a spin interaction that involves multiple orbitals and that that would be uh, uh, driving uh, or the primary driving force uh, 
for uh, physics such as superconductivity. Uh, for the Mari systems, uh, I describe a, uh, a setting uh, in which uh, we can uh, consider the role of fragile insulator, which is a big part uh, of oh, I, what I want to term as the coiled insulator that's been seen in these systems, as well as the accompanying bad uh, metallic state of the parent system uh, for uh, their role uh, on the uh, pneumatic correlations, which have uh, just been seen uh, in the initial batch of experiments. Uh, and uh, there presumably will be more that will be forthcoming. Uh, and also, uh, uh, and I want to use the pneumatic order as a proxy of uh, the low energy physics uh, uh, that uh, comes with the uh, in the systems. And, uh, uh, and to me, <coughs> the uh, a persistence of superconductivity when you drive uh, the uh, parents, the integer filling phase out of the fragile insulator into the bad metal phase is in fact uh, a uh, reinforcement of uh, the notion that uh, it is uh, electron correlations which primarily is driving uh, superconductivity. Thank you. Let's thank uh, Kimia. A lot of, a lot of uh, great material. Um, let's uh, start with a few questions. Yesha, you have a question. Uh, yes, so I, I mean, uh, about this last point, um, uh, I guess, uh, I guess uh, the distinction in my mind was that uh, if a system uh, becomes a mott insulator at half filling, uh, then this is a strong correlator, a strong, uh, uh, strongly correlated system. Otherwise, it's a weakly correlated system. But no, the point that you raise is that it could be that it doesn't become insulator, but it's a still a strongly correlated system. So can you please explain? Yeah. So, so usually when we see uh, a correlated insulator in a phase diagram, we connect it to the cooperated physics, which uh, uh, in which uh, you know would be uh, presumably would be somewhere around here, uh, where the insulating state is already very well established. Uh, the right. what I want to contend is that the inserting phase that's been seen in these Mori systems is very fragile, which means that, yes, it's on the localized side, but it really is not too far away from the Mar transition. And if I just uh, tune the correlation stress by relatively small amount, I don't know, uh, say 10% in this dimensionless measure, I can already go to the bad metal side. But it's a bad metal. It's a not so. Neither uh, in this terminology, neither is strongly correlated. Both are intermediately correlated, and both uh, are sitting in the vicinity of the localization, delocalization transition. Just that uh, uh, one is uh, on one side, and the other is on the other side. Uh, can you also explain what would be a Hund's axis uh, do on this diagram? If I had that paired axis of Hund's interaction, like a local Hund's interaction. Yeah, so, um, you know, in more the orbital systems, I, I talked about such a, a two axis a phase diagram last time for the, in the context of nictides. And that leads to uh, when you have, when you break the orbital degeneracy, you get, you end up with orbital selectivity. But otherwise, uh, what uh, if uh, in a system like this particular one that I talked about, the, there's orbital degeneracy, and uh, what the Hund's coupling does is to uh, lower the threshold interaction for the localization delocalization transition. Uh, whether it uh, retains, wh whether it changes the order of transition from uh, uh, one to another, that's a harder question. I've, uh, uh, worked, I agree, I agree. We've worked sure. pretty hard. Uh, but it favors the, insulator. It, it favors, ins it, it favors in insulating. Yes. yes, correct. Thank you. And, and in fact, uh, that was one point I made that this curve corresponds to, uh, and I should stress, this is really the hard work of Lei Chen and Hao Yu Hu, um, that uh, this is the Hong's coupling equal to zero. Yes. The threshold value is here. And uh, if I switch on Hong's coupling, for instance, this ratio of 3%, uh, so that the boundary has already been shifted sizable. So it, um, 
uh, makes uh, the, the threshold for localization to be reduced, threshold interaction. Okay. Um, any other questions here? Central has a question. Central, we can't hear you. Oh, great. Yeah. If you can. Um, Good. So the uh, the order that you had is uh, the collinear antiferromagnet, and uh, that, did I understand correctly that it persists into the metallic state? Yeah. Uh, so that would uh, that presumably can be uh, addressed in experiment by looking at Shubnikov de Haas oscillations in the metallic state. Yeah, so that's see, uh, or, or even uh, in these systems uh, that they have realized recently, one could also uh, ask whether there's anisotropy. Yeah, so the anisotropy is a bit harder to measure in the normal state. And, uh, uh, so what do you mean? Because, like that? oh, uh, you know, the, the transport experiments uh, to detect anisotropy, what they have to do is to look at uh, Rxy minus Ryx, you know, that's symmetric in a field. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a bit subtle to extract. That. Well, I was thinking more of this STM. Right? Um, Oh, STM is, you know, for the system you talked about, given that it's, uh, it needs dual gates, right? So to apply the displacement field, it may be hard to tunnel them. In the ABC trilayer. No, no, know, those I, are I, I, I'm sort of using the ABC trilayer as, uh, as a setting where, you know, uh, some concrete calculations can be done. But I'm suggesting that even mm. in this just the bilayer case, where uh, I think there were several protocols which were, have been used to reduce the interaction and mm -hmm. kill the uh, insulating phase. Yeah, I'm suggesting that the, for integer filling, especially the metallic state, uh, something like this measured in the anisotropy in the local density of states. Uh, would be mm. extremely instructive to see whether, because sure. I, yeah. I have the feeling that that the band folding associated with um, magnetic order, it would be wonderful to see that, uh, but probably is harder than, mm. uh, than the, 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 the anisotropy uh, in this STM type of measurement. Yeah, it'd be good to do STM on the screen devices. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And just, just to see where the features, how the features evolve mm -hmm. as you go through uh, this tuning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks. Okay, we have a question here from um, uh, uh, Matthew Watson. Matthew, do you want to ask it yourself or shall I read it out? No response there. I'll read it out then. Matthew Watson says, on the first half of the talk, the term pneumatic originally came as an analogy for e.g. orthorhombic phase of barium 122s because rotational symmetry is broken. However, your AFQ order for iron selenide breaks translation and later you described pneumatic order as rather as breaking mirror symmetries rather than rotation and even had a pneumatic mode that preserved C4 symmetry. So the question then is, what is your definition of pneumatic now? It seems like you use it for any state without dipole or spin order. Um, a bit tough, but I'm reading it out to you. Well, <laughs> um, so I, I did two things, right? Uh, I think there were several aspects of that question. Uh, in the antiferro quadrupolar order, uh, yes, it breaks translational symmetry just like anti pi zero anti fellow magnetic order uh, does. And uh, I'll be very happy if the giving where the question came from, I presume the Fermi surface was in mind and I'll be happy to address it. But I think that was not the content of the question. Uh, the definition theoretically is uh, this was still done 
uh, this is still B1G pneumatic order. So, so the uh, symmetry wise, the, what the pneumatic order that, uh, that's associated with this pi zero antiferro quadrupolar order microscopically is different from that uh, that uh, one typically would use for the 122 barrier, 122 arsenides, but it's exactly the same symmetry. So if you are measuring it, you cannot tell the difference as far as pneumaticity is concerned. So this is just B1G in the language that I use later on, this is the B1G uh, pneumatic order. I, in this part, I have said that if I want to capture, for instance, A1, A2G, which also breaks a discrete uh, uh, symmetry, uh, it, I'm better off to use the, uh, this, uh, this uh, broken mirror symmetry formulation, but where they overlap, the B1G and B2G, I, I could just use a C4 symmetry breaking. So, and since A2G has not been seen, it, it, this, this broken mirror symmetry analysis uh, classification, we found it very useful because it allows us to understand uh, the quasi-degeneracy being a robust feature of at least four particular types of magnetic fluctuations. But if you are uh, uh, concerned with the B1G and the B2G pneumaticity, uh, which in the FDSE one certainly is, and even for the uh, cesium IL2 arsenic too, right? uh, I'm not deviating from the usual definition of pneumatic order. It's a broken C4 signature. So, but I, I'm, I think there may be some other components of questions, so maybe <laughs> if uh, there's a follow up. Any more questions? Let me just see. Uh, I have one. Good. Yeah. Here's uh, Simiao. Uh, yeah. As far as I understood, um, you actually relate the uh, nematicity to the biquadratic exchange. And the question then arises whether, um, for instance, an iron selenide, um, where you don't have magnetic order, where does the um, uh, pneumaticity arise from? Yeah, so, so the scenario that we propose is that, uh, that this overall Hamiltonian that contains the usual J1, J2 type interactions and the biquadratic interactions, uh, uh, it's uh, there's enough of the competition from these different terms in interaction that uh, that it has a rich phase diagram. In this phase diagram, uh, there is uh, such a phase which uh, is made up of this uh, spin quadrupolar moment, uh, but differentiates between the x and the y axis. And so this phase cannot be stabilized in the absence of the bi-quadratic interaction, but in its presence, and it can compete with uh, J1, J2, uh, this phase uh, competes uh, with uh, the usual pi zero uh, antiferromagnetic type of phase. Uh, and so, so the, the picture here is that uh, even though here I see static uh, neutral signal for uh, pi zero collinear antiferro magnetic order. Here I don't. Uh, the pneumaticity is the same. And in, that's in FESE, it's the same uh, tetragonal to uh, orthorhombic structural phase transition. That's the proxy of the pneumatic order, just like in barrier one, two, two. Uh, so, so the, the, the um, the, the uh, short answer is that I have the competition between J1 and J2, but I also have the competition between J and K. When J ones, I get the pi zero collinear antiferro magnetic order. Mm -hmm. And when K ones uh, in this competition, I get, end up with this state, which has all the properties that are compatible with uh, what is seen in FESC. Okay, thank you. But if I understand correctly, then the pneumaticity actually arises from the fluctuation of the spins. And sure. I would then expect that then the J coupling, uh, um, the linear coupling will also be always be stronger than the 
uh, fluctuations of this um, um, of the uh, quadratic um, by quadratic exchange. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so that's the question about where precisely uh, the phase boundary uh, is, and uh, uh, so we can say the following. Um, uh, I, I said uh, two things. One is that uh, I don't have a control of what precisely the microscopic value of K and J is, and I think nobody does either, just because uh, ab initial calculation for K is much harder for ab initial calculations of uh, J's. Uh, but already in the uh, uh, Baryon uh, 122, uh, we looked at the spectrum of the uh, uh, determined by in-last neutral scattering, you know, the dispersing features uh, uh, and the momentum energy distributions of the spin spectral wave. Uh, uh, initially, there was a statement from the uh, neutral scattering experimentalists that they have to make uh, J1A to be different from J1B in the tetragonal phase. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, but if you have a K term uh, with a, a K over J, that's less than one, but you know not uh, that much smaller than one, uh, one can understand the spectrum. So, so I'm saying, so look at this phase diagram. K over J is uh, somewhere around uh, 0.8, et cetera. Uh, that's the, the good enough to reach that that, that into this uh, uh, quadrupole uh, order the phase, and exactly. uh, and, I, and I can uh, so I cannot give you uh, uh, the best answer in terms of values, but I can establish a trend that uh, if I go to uh, better metallicity site like FESC under pressure, uh, then I can uh, on various theoretical grounds I can say the K over J is decreasing. And, and that would be compatible with our proposal that uh, going from FESE to pressurized side, which is closer to the one to two arsenides, one is going from this side to the other side. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, we have a few more questions. Let me ask one from the chat. Uh, Zakia Hossein says, fragile insulator, does it mean the insulating state can be tuned to metallic state easily? That's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is that uh, uh, the energy scales associated with this insulating state, such as the gap, the temperature regime that it uh, 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 operates, those temperature scales are much smaller than the natural scale, uh, such as U uh, or the bandwidth. So, so this is a regime where U over W basically is of order unity. And, uh, and one way to define a fragile uh, insulating state is that the gap and the temperature range where it operates is uh, uh, there's a hierarchy uh, uh, of scale smaller, uh, lower than uh, U or W. Okay. But it's compatible if I'm in, uh, if I have an insulating state which is closer to the transition rather than here. Clearly, it's much easier to tune it through uh, uh, the transition onto the metallic side. And that's why I think that the, the recent uh, experiments, why that's so exciting from the perspective of uh, thinking in terms of where uh, the overall system is placed uh, in, in this sort of uh, uh, phase diagram. Okay. okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, let's go back to the uh, raise hands. Uh, we have two still coming up. Uh, the, the next one is from Yasha Komijani. Yasha, you have a question. Yes, I, I, uh, I mean, we know that in this kind of more systems, uh, the interaction is long range, and this can be in principle captured in your slave spin uh, method by using a cluster a system. So, so is there a justification for dropping those terms, or, or can you comment on it? Yeah, so, so slave spin, uh, I was more using it uh, as uh, a guidance uh, of that. Uh, the main focus is really 
to look at order and, and pneumaticity. I find, I'm fascinated by by the pneumatic uh, order or correlation that have been uh, observed. Uh, VMC, uh, it, cluster would be a very natural thing to do. For instance, uh, it's almost like a, the kind of questions that uh, you and I would be both very naturally thinking about. In heavy fermions, you have the competition of the RKKY versus condo scheme, right? Now, here I think the the uh, the the uh, there's an issue of generated interactions and uh, um, and these direct uh, interaction, in particular direct exchange interaction, uh, which uh, uh, makes the, 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 the question very interesting from uh, all sorts of ways. Like, for instance, the makes the strong coupling analysis somewhat more limited than uh, it could could it be. Uh, but obviously, one would like to uh, to, to do that. And but you know, uh, maybe uh, um, if the issue is about um, pneumatic order, which is a Q equals zero order, of course, there's no cluster that will be large enough for that. Uh, and uh, uh, so, so in some sense, uh, it's not at least obvious that uh, there's a particular. Uh, uh, one could anticipate a uh, major change to the, as far as the physics of the order is concerned. Uh, the, uh, if you ask a question like uh, Q-dependent uh, dynamic or structure factors, surely uh, it would, as well as uh, properties of uh, single particle momentum dependence or something like that. But if well, the question is along those directions, yes, they would be very, very, very instructive. But I think for the purpose of, uh, 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 looking at gross features such as pneumatic order as a Q equals zero order, um, what uh, is done uh, for the uh, outside part uh, is uh, is already uh, uh, very instructive. We've also compared uh, this kind of uh, EMC studies with uh, just good old uh, self-consistent Hartree flock type of calculations, which uh, well, Twisted binary case has made uh, considerable progress. And then we can see uh, both uh, uh, the reasonableness and the limitations of Hartree Fock uh, compared to uh, uh, the, these kind of correlated uh, calculations. Okay, let me uh, then invite Gersh to uh, pose his question. Gersh, if you can uh, unmute yourself. Yes. Uh... Good to see you, Jimmy. Hi, Kirsch. Uh, a question, well, back to the first part of the talk yeah. where you do the classification B1G, B2G, mm -hmm. uh, It's uh, somehow related to what Matthew Watson asked. Um, when it gets to A2G, it doesn't break C4. It breaks, indeed, breaks all mirror symmetries, but it doesn't break the C4. So uh, the canonical name of nematicity is usually related to a breaking C4 symmetry. So whether it's nematic or not uh, depends on your definition. Yeah. Uh, but another comment was that uh, in relation to this B1, G, B2, G, there is this uh, system you may know, uh, it's just a comment, 1144, which indeed breaks the symmetry uh, 45 degrees of the one that happens in one, two, two. So, and that, that indeed happens and it's, uh, uh, it's a system, there's a family of these materials uh, you may want to look at. So what, 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 what indeed happens in the one, one, four, four? The, the, the symmetry, the symmetry that is broken there is B2G symmetry. Uh-huh, but so, I thought, uh, yeah, so I, I have not uh, looked at one, one, four, four. As yeah, that's 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 uh, exactly the example. So that's why yeah, I'm making but this I, point. I thought the structural, uh, there's some... Initially, it's tetragonal, right? But what what's get broken is, uh, example is calcium, calcium, potassium, mm. uh, iron, four, arsenide, four. I, I will... Uh, I'll, send, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link to yeah, our please, paper. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, thank you for the comment. And uh, I, I, I'm very interested in looking at the one we for and we should follow up. I said a very interesting following up. 
but in, regarding the first part, um, uh, so uh, the perspective I take is that, well, uh, C4 is also part of a crystalline uh, symmetry, right? Sure. And so, so long as it breaks a, a discrete symmetry uh, in this uh, cat categorization, and if I have a classification scheme that encompasses B1, G, B2, G that normally one thinks about, uh, I think A2, G qualifies as, as a, a pneumatic order state, but at the end of it, it's a semantics. It's a, it's an irreducible representation. Yeah, it depends on what the canonical, mm -hmm. it, yeah, uh, name to that is. I mean, initially, as Matthew pointed out, uh, is a broken C4 symmetry, and yeah. and both B1 and B2 break C4, A2. Uh, well, B1 and B2 also break mirrors, as you correctly say, uh, but uh, uh, A2 breaks more mirrors and preserves C4. Right, yeah. and then, and yeah, you can build a density wave. So the proposal to, for uranium, ruthenium to silicon two was was yeah. one uh, uh, you know, uh, exactly where it breaks breaks locally to G, but it's a staggered order, etc. But well, of all people, I do not need to uh, to point out to you that the A to G is very interesting. Oh, sure. uh, and uh, all that I'm saying that if you find uh, a tetragonal phase. Uh, you, you may still have a broken, a discrete symmetry, and uh, uh, but I, oh yeah, A two definitely A two breaks discrete symmetry. There's no yeah, yeah uh, there's no question about that. It so lowers it, it very, lowers the point group symmetry. It, you it go from D four H to C C two V or whatever C four V. It would be very interesting. We certainly have not thought enough about it. It would be very interesting to see what the um, uh, uh, what are the signatures of the a to G. Uh, well, we discussed the, that in uh, in relation to this uranium yeah, no, no, I, silicon. Uh, so we, I, actually, we can, I meant uh, to, uh, yeah, I'll be happy to I, discuss I meant, that. I meant to mention the connection with the uh, uranium uranium to silicon to a fascinating uh, system and uh, 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 absolutely. Uh, so it would, it would be a very interesting link uh, to consider. So yeah, I imagine Raman, for instance, would be very much equipped to analyze uh, the the consequence, the, the signature of it. Thank you. Okay, I think we've come to the end of all the questions and it's a good chance for us to thank Chi Miao for a great and very stimulating talk. Uh, so unmute your microphones and... Uh... <laughs> Oh, Pierce, you're muted. Yeah. Can I say, say something? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so I think this, this was really wonderful, uh, new type of conference, and I really enjoyed the many talks I, I listened to, and so I wish to thank all the organizers, in particular you, Pierce, for putting this all together and uh, keeping track of, uh, of, the, of the whole uh, program. Thank you very much. Well, actually, it's everyone who was involved in the organizing committee did a huge amount of work, and it would be impossible without a collective effort. So we'll take that as a collective thanks to all of us. Thank you. Um, uh, so, well, so first of all, um, uh, let me applaud all the participants. Uh, and uh, some of you have stayed up really late at night. Some of you have gotten up incredibly early in the morning. Um, this has been a, a, a great experience and also the students who really asked lots of questions, plucked up their courage and asked questions uh, uh, to the speakers. It's been a very good experience. Um, Gunnar has, uh, I've just sent you all a copy of the uh, assessment of who actually participated in the meeting. Gunnar has taken this from the registrations. It's not a, it's not a final count, but I'll share the screen with you just to have a look at that. Um, uh, this is the, this is the right one. I think that's the right one. Did I get it right? I think so. Let me share that with you. Yeah, so 
here is the uh, here is the um, uh, histogram of the participants. We've had something like 36 countries participate. Um, we haven't been able to completely uh, separate out all the numbers. So you can see there's the third country on the list here is the country of Gmail. Um, uh, so uh, it'd be interesting to know how that divides subsequently, but we've got countries all the way from Indonesia, Ukraine, uh, Russia, uh, the count there on China is actually an undercount. We had about 10 from China, uh, Taiwan, Argentina, uh, lots of participants from Europe and Japan, um, Brazil, South America. This has been a, a great experience. And I think one of the questions that we will all have to ask is whether in our future face-to-face -face conferences, we'll also be having an online component. I think it's an interesting point to uh, think about for the future. Um, but we're basically done with our meeting. Um, uh, and what we thought we would do, anyone wants to hang around, we'd hang around uh, chatting for uh, uh, 20 more minutes just to say hi to each other. Anyone's welcome to join that. Um, if you have any suggestions uh, uh, that you want to send to us by email, please do. Um, the website's still going to be up. We're going to update all the PDFs and all of the videos. Um, you may find it interesting to know that uh, some of the videos have been watched up to uh, 500 times. Um, so there's certainly been a lot of interest generated there. Um, so thank you, everyone. And that brings us to an end uh, of Condensed Matter in the Cities. And we're just going to go now and uh, chill out at the notionally at the pub on the corner. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we'll get a beer from the fridge. Don't get your beer so that we could at least yeah. have one person. <laughs> I have to the statistics. The other time. Yes, I hope man. that. Yeah, uh, yeah, right, right. The other country that was very much underrepresented okay. in the statistics that we sent around is India. So very many people from India subscribe to Gmail just I so think so. that's with <laughs> Maybe we can uh, filter that out. Like yeah, yeah, we, we, think, should uh, had, we should have had a country uh, query in the registration. Yes, that would have made this easier. Made it a lot easier, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think, um, I think uh, people who are in different time zones will have been much more likely to look at the talks offline yes. rather than turn up. Mm -hmm. There were certainly some people from Australia that told me, we're going to watch every talk, but we won't be on the Zoom call. Yeah. So those didn't need to register, right? They, well, they sort of did because we didn't, I mean, okay, at least for the live thing. No, I, I guess anybody can look at YouTube, of course. Yeah. Right. right. If, I, if I may, I want to I say two things. Uh, one is that I think uh, it's amazing the amount of work all the organizers have put in and the cheerfulness that everybody is uh, part of it. To me, really reflects um, this consortium. Uh, what do you call it, uh, Hubbard? The Hubbard Theory Consortium, we call us. The Hubbard Theory Consortium. You, you should be very proud that this consortium is working so well. Uh, I think with all that, uh, this cannot uh, have happened. Uh, the second thing is that I wonder whether, you know, you could uh, summarize. It. It's not uh, a point of making you to do more work, but just the, some of the obvious things you've uh, learned from the organization. Could you put it out in some form publicly, just because? I think we will. And I think one of the things we want to particularly do is to um, uh, share some of the things we actually did in terms of making it work. Uh, Gunnar yeah. and Sam did a huge amount of work behind the scenes, both on the WordPress website, yeah. but also uh, the little, all the little buttons you have to twink to make sure that Zoom streams to live video and how you have to connect up to YouTube. Um, there's a lot of detail there that would be really good to record. But people. also, I mean, you really kept the students uh, until the very end and that is not easy. That, that is, uh, I'm sure there's a effort behind the scene to make that happen. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I think they want to get attendance points so they can come to the face-to-face -face school next year. <laughs> I got some German beer and I want to drink to all the organizers. So <laughs> Cheers. 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 Yeah, I mean, I think it's good to give the students a role. I mean, I think they appreciated leading some of the discussions. And yes. yeah. I think. Video submissions have generated a very good response. So that was That's a great idea. So they, they feel they are part of uh, the whole thing. Yeah. Hey, there's Victor, my, one of my students. Yeah, it was the, the, the student sessions were like the best we could do, I think, for the online version. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's better. It's usually better always to be in a, in a seminar room and like Pierce said, to, you know, have the blackboard and be more interactive more, but this this worked well for uh the circumstances so i think thank you for like making sure you organized it for the students it was nice yeah i wonder whether we could do with uh, some bloggers um one of the things we haven't really kept a good record of is all the questions uh, yeah and it would be good to have them in print on a page somewhere and the kinds of responses and the references that go with them uh that would that would be useful um uh, yeah, in past, past, past conference I had, we had that. Yeah. Well, well, the chats get saved, right? I mean, in the recording. Yeah, you can save. Save. That's true. I, I mean, I suppose we could put the chats up if we wanted to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the ones that happened during the talks, I mean, everything in the chat got pretty much read out anyway at some point. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. The videos do have a record of this. What we don't have a record of is the student sessions afterwards, but yeah, I mean, maybe that's partially for the better because it allows you to be a bit less yes, um, exposed. Limited. Yes. Well, in our local graduate uh, journal club, the staff are not allowed, are not allowed to be near the room or the Zoom room when they are doing it. And, and I, I have tentatively sometimes asked, how about for this one, maybe we could turn up? And it's been very clear they don't want this to happen. <laughs> there must be some magic that breaks. <laughs> yeah, you can't let your hair down so easily if you've got your boss in the room. Um, um, one, one thing I should let you all know is that uh, I'm... I'm not escaping from the online world. In one month's time, ICAM is running uh, a, it, its annual meeting, we're calling it an ICAM summit. Um, and we're gonna use some of the experiences from this meeting at that meeting. One yeah. of the things we're doing is that for weird reasons, no, uh, Phil Anderson didn't have a funeral, didn't have a memorial, nothing this year. So we're gonna hold a little event uh, at the ICAM summit, which will open to everyone. Um, we're going to have Andy Zangwell uh, uh, give us a talk on Phil Anderson. Andy Zangwell was Phil's biographer, and so he's written a book on Andy that will come out next year. And then we're going to have an, a, a round table with people who knew Phil very well, like Bill Brinkman uh, and Duncan Haldane chatting uh, around a table. And we're going to try to have this kind of intimacy that we have here. Um, and so I've actually invited Gunnar and Sam, if they would like to help out a little bit with that, so we can make this a success. Um, uh, so um, I mean, that, that surely will resonate with the community. It just it feels will, like I think we'll probably have to split it up into maybe those who watch on YouTube and those who get invited, because the numbers may actually blow up on us. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that kind of event. Um, uh, what, what's the maximum number of? Uh, well. They, uh, of uh, participants who have joined your Zoom thing? Well, we, we, we did get to 550 and then it blew up on us. Yeah, yeah, no, I was there the first day. That may not have been because of the numbers. It may be because I did something stupid that day. That's my suspicion. Um, no, I, I have a feeling that day there really was actually a central problem with Zoom. Yeah, I see. Yes, we it don't was know. Nothing, it was nothing we did. I see. We were just unfortunate it was the first day. But. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, um, although I did start the meeting on my cell phone and then I swiped up my cell phone account and then logged in. And I have the feeling that that left that account still there. 
and it logged us all off at some point, but I don't actually know. Um, so, so you, need a, you need a second data point. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have another 500 people together to see if it breaks down again. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, throughout the first week, we had two to 300, I think, at most of the events on Zoom. We did. The second right. week was between one and 200. Yeah, yeah. That's so right. it stayed pretty um, big throughout. Yeah. And no. there was another 20 to 50 watching on YouTube, it seems, for yeah. most talks. Yeah. So, so the count says the UK participation is 170? 193, according to the... 193? Yeah. That's and, a lot. And 163 from the USA, which is quite good given the time zone. Although mm -hmm. That's partly because I insisted we hold it in the afternoon so that we could get up for it. Um, no, my, my students, uh, they want to join in. They were too shy to ask for registration because it's closed. So did they say, oh, well, just there's a live stream. Yeah, yeah. Streaming, yeah. So yeah, we probably had a lot on live streaming. So good, yeah, no, so it'll be, um, it's, I mean, normally this meeting has about 25 to 30 people in the seminar room. Um, so this is an explosive. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're <laughs> nobody <laughs> else bets. <laughs> I, I think, uh, limit, I think. Uh, Last year we, like we had this, 60 or so at points. Yeah, okay, yes. Uh, for a format like this, the larger number of organizers really, really is helpful. Because yeah, you so need much, uh, many hands on deck to keep it yeah. going. I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and the point is that staff cannot help you. <laughs> yeah. That's... Strangely, I think it felt more intimate as well. Because a, a, a hundred people in a seminar room, some of the students might, may have been shut, um, more reserved about asking questions and so on, but I think with this format, the barrier is lower. And I, I yeah, think that's a probably. good thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also particularly because they could type them into the chat to begin with, and then they see that nobody thinks they're stupid questions. Yeah. And they get the confidence. Yes. I must also say it has helped that everyone who has participated has been very civil. Because in a group of 200 people, you know, you just need 1% of trolls and you already have two trolls. And this hasn't happened. You yeah. know, you see all kinds of discussions on YouTube, on live streams where people start to be a bit impolite about how silly, and none of that has happened. I'm very proud of our community, I think. Yeah, no, there's been um, very, very good behavior in the whole thing. We didn't have yeah. to throw anyone out. Um, uh, we were worried about that when we first did this. We thought what was going to happen, <laughs> but no, but it was. You they practiced were throwing me out, Piers. I seem to recall. Okay, you may worried whether I'd be able to attend at all. That's right, we practiced <laughs> throwing Andrew out at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's good. One of the suggestions from John Saunders is that maybe the HTC should think about whether it can apply for a joint grant to the EPSRC. Um, and I, I think that's something we might want to think about, actually. Yeah. I mean, you mean just for the conference or to actually well, no, I think a best program way, grant? The best way is to go for a program grant, probably. So that's something we might want to think about moving towards in the next year. Um, good idea. Is my perception that the big overall group has grown, uh, is that correct, in recent years? Sort of, you know, no, we've, we've We've lo also lost. We we lost Matthias Eschrig and that's true. I think compared to the very beginning, it has grown because when we started, yes. you know, UCL was not part of the HTC, and uh, uh, the Kent side has grown. So I think in total, probably it's grown, right? Yeah, that's true. We have Imperial, and I, I think the fact that the HTC existed has helped that because managers see something that has an entity that is worth investing in. Yeah, certainly you guys at Kent have grown tremendously over this period. Yeah. You moved there and you've grown your group. That's, and, uh, so that's been a tremendous... Uh, uh, Even, uh, you know, Sam, Sam was not uh, in Kent when we started. Yes. So first Sam came, then Gunnar. Yes. So, yeah, it's... Yeah. Um, Piers, Yes. Uh, are we wanting to continue streaming this to YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Okay. okay. <laughs> so we could probably turn off the recording as well. 